Do you ever see a costume in a film or a TV show and just think, I need that? Well, that is exactly how I felt when I first saw Crimson Peak. So if you'd like to see how I made my own version of this tea gown, then stick around. Hi friends and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if it's your first time here. Regular viewers will know that I am going away next month. There are quite a few things that I need for this still. I'm kind of in panic mode right now. <laughs> But one of the things we're going to get done today is the tea gown. When we were all talking about the various bits and pieces that we'd need for this getaway, nightwear was one of the things that came up. So a Victorian nightdress and a Victorian dressing gown. I do like a bit of the dramatic. So for me, doing a version of the Crimson Peak tea gown just seemed perfect. I love pretty much everything about it. I love the dramatic sleeves. I just, I love the idea of swanning around and something like that. Yellow isn't really my colour though. So I am going to be using a completely different colour fabric for it. The general shape of it and stuff though, I am keeping the same. Now I know that not everybody wants to sit through like 15 minutes worth of just talking about a pattern. Also, if I did that, this video will probably end up being over an hour long. So what I've decided to do is put up a video for free on my coffee page that is just talking about the pattern. Because the way my mind works is generally I'll look at the instructions for something, realise that I can't work it out, and then just make up my own thing from looking at the pictures. I'm not sure if this is a dyslexic thing or not. If you're dyslexic and you do this too, then let me know in the comments. Rather than taking up a massive chunk of the video just talking about how I'm figuring out this pattern, I'm going to just do it as a separate video. I am also going to be putting up the pattern that I make for this available for you on my coffee page to download. So if you would like to help me out and support my goal of getting some new lights, it will be very much appreciated. Thank you to everybody who has supported me so far. One of the perks of supporting me is you will get your name at the end of the video. So thank you to everybody who has supported me so far though, it is very, very much appreciated. Right, on with making a mock-up. Okay, so as you can see, it's not looking too bad overall. I'm pretty happy with it. Little things that need changing though are the front bit needs a little bit of extra room in the boob area. Um, that'll be just because the pattern is taken from one where I'm wearing a corset usually, and obviously with this I'm not going to be wearing a corset, so the distribution of things is a little bit different. Other little things are the collar just needs some stiffening but that's not too bad. It does need rounding on the corners as well because it's a little bit like that. And the big issue for me is the shoulders. Uh, they're just, they're, they're, they're like down here. Um, they need coming up a good inch and a half I reckon. I'll pin it and see how it looks. Um, but yeah, that's quite a bit too low. I'm not 100% sure how it's ended up being like that because I've used that pattern before and it's been okay. But anyway, that adjustment needs making. The only other little thing is I just need to true up the bottom of the sleeves because I added some in places and it's just come out a little bit uneven and I need to just true up the bottom. I would like a little bit more of a train at the back so I might add another like maybe five inches to the back just because it, you can't see it in the actual video because there's not enough room for you to see it properly where I was standing but it's just not quite dramatic enough for me so yeah just add that little bit of extra other than that though those, all those changes are all quite minor and I'm not going to have to do another mock-up to figure them out. So that means it is time to cut out the fashion fabric. For the fashion fabric, 
I showed this briefly before, but just how beautiful is this fabric? It's absolutely gorgeous. Yes, it is like 100% plastic. I'm pretty sure it's an upholstery fabric, but at three pound a meter, I could not let this go. It is such a beautiful design. And to go with that for the bits going down the front and the like tie bits, because looking at the picture, I've been trying to work this out and there's not very many reference images online. Like, and I've tried searching for Crimson Peak dressing gown, Crimson Peak tea gown, Crimson Peak wrapper, and it just seemed to get the same like four images, which is really annoying. It looks to me like there's two strips going down the center front in a different material. And that same material is also used to do like a bow around the neck, like a double layered bow thing. And then like a little tie bit around the waist. I'm still working out exactly how to do it. I'm gonna have to watch some video footage, I think, to see if there's two individual little bits that are flapping around the bottom when it's open and she's going down the stairs. Either way though, I will figure it out. And I've got this really lovely linen viscose blend. Um, I didn't get very much of it because it was something that was on sale and I wasn't 100% sure what the quality was going to be like so I just got a bit but it should be enough just to do this little bit of detailing on the front and the tie. Right time to make some quick changes to the pattern and then time to cut out the fashion fabric. The fabric actually ended up being a little bit difficult to cut over the embroidery but I managed. I started off by sewing the darts and then all the long seams of the lining and then pressed everything. Right, I have got a lining. This is all sewn together. I've got the lining sleeves as well. They are done. I did have to do some piecing um, and I decided for the bit that needs to be pieced on at the bottom to use the same material as the outer fabric because it's got quite a bit of good weight to it and it's in the train. Um, it's also quite a hardy material, this it seems like, so I feel like it'd hold up to being dragged along the floor a bit. I might do a dust ruffle on the bottom anyway, if I've got any fabric that I could use for that, but we'll see. The important thing is getting it done. Next on the agenda is sewing together the outer fabric. Shouldn't be too hard, it's literally just a bunch of straight seams and then the shoulders. Where things get a little bit more fiddly is with the sleeves, but I'll get into more detail with that once I get there. I did find a bit of footage of the tea gown in action on YouTube and that's filled in some blanks for me. I now know that there's two long bits that are dangling down that could be tied theoretically. There's two like little puff bits here and then there's two more on the waist. I have got no idea what they're for though. <laughs> I think they're just decorative. So either way I'm going to put them on because it's part of the tea gown. Um, I could also see that there's some little buttons going up there on the collar so I don't particularly like really tight things around my neck but I'll put the buttons on so that it's an option to do them if I decide to do them up. Okay so I tried it on 
and we've got a little problem just a just little problem um it's a little bit too tight across the shoulders what i'm thinking is my mock-up fabric must have had a bit more stretch in it than this does because this actually has like pretty much no stretch at all and the mock-up fabric i used was an old bed sheet and it did have a little bit of give to it so it's not by much i'm going to unpick this seam here and then just add a little panel inside there just to widen it a bit i think by like i'll try an inch i think it'll be about an inch um the neck actually isn't too bad on it so I'll do it make like that short sort of shape, I think. And then that should be good. The outer fabric has all been put together for like the main thing. Um, the sleeves have been put together as well. I just need to add the big poofy bit on top. For the back, this is my shoulder seam here. And then I've got all this excess this is going to work like um, a robe a la Francais, I think I'm saying that right, from the 1700s. The like the sack dress where it's got like the big pleats on the back. I will admit I am 100% winging this. I don't have any guide to the pleating pattern for the mock-up. I just kind of guessed it. But what I came up with looked okay. So we're going to try and recreate that now. Right, that legitimately took about half an hour <laughs> of trying to figure it out, but I did. And the neck measures the correct width and everything, so that is good. When I do the pattern on my Kofi account, I will remember to put little markings to show how to do this pleat because like I say it took me a while. I am going to baste this down so that that's all secure and then we can start sorting out sleeves. Okay I'm wearing a hat because it's really humid and my hair looks gross <laughs> but anyway two things. One I have just spent way too long ironing <laughs> and I've discovered a little issue this fabric well I spotted two issues actually this fabric it doesn't like to press very well as that seems to be a running thing I always seem to end up with fabric that doesn't press well and I'm pretty sure it's because I'm a lot of the time I'm buying fabric that's supposed to be for upholstery and not actually for making clothes with <laughs> But the other issue is it's very slippery. So there's some areas where, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but one layer has slipped right under, so it's ended up not quite catching and there's like a little hole there. So I'm gonna have to find all the areas where it's done that and just stitch along like that, just to catch that other edge, which is annoying. <laughs> There's only, I think, maybe like two or three that I spotted when I was ironing. The other thing I need to do is sleeves. I've got a lining and an outer fabric. What I need to do is, I've, I know I've shown me doing this on a couple of videos, but I don't think I've ever actually explained it. So, you take your outer fabric, turn that right way round. Then you get your lining fabric still inside out. And you put that inside. 
making sure that it's all oriented the right way round. Okay, this is what we don't want. We've got this big side on that side and there's that big side on that side. So we need to turn it round. And then what I like to do, sorry if you can hear the music, it's my neighbour. So, just put your arms through so you can make sure that that's all right. And then we need to pin these two pieces together. And after all that, I've just realised that I've actually done it the wrong way around. <laughs> It needs to be this one inside this one. <laughs> Pin around that way and sew it that way around. Now I have got that sewn, we turn it right like that. Grab this bit of lining and then pull it through. And what I've done is I've made the lining about a quarter inch shorter than this, so that when it's all lined up, it's it sits just inside with that little bit there. So I think that looks rather neat. I'm quite happy with that. Right, now that they are done, I've got these huge bits, which I need to do a row of gathering stitches along the top and along the bottom, and then they are going to go on the top part of the sleeve. So I'm going to get those gathering stitches and then I'll show you what I'm doing from there. Okay, I've got my sleeve. I have marked on it a line to follow to pin this down. As usual, I've just used regular pen because nobody's going to see it. It doesn't matter. What I need to do now is get all my little threads out of the way. I did try and iron this, but it's just, yeah, it's, it's not happening. I need to find just, just this layer, not going into this layer. And just pin up to the line that I've drawn. Editing Casca popping in just to say, I messed up. Do not do what I did. You don't line up the seams like that because on a two-piece seam, the underarm bit is the scoopy bit, not the seam because the seam runs along the side. It wasn't a huge deal in the finished piece, but if you look closely at the underneath section, you can see that things are twisted. So yeah, don't be me. Line up to the scoopy bit not the seam. <laughs> now I need to find the centre. Get all the threads out of the way and then pin that in line with the line on that side. Now I need to gather all of this up and pin it along there. Right, a 
know this looks like a big jumble of mess of fabric but this is the sleeve this is that huge bit of fabric that we've just put on and this ends up going over the top of the sleeve head and then all gets gathered down so what I need to do now is actually attach this to the body of the wrapper so what we're gonna do is we're gonna ignore the lining for a bit I'll shifty that in there and that can go I just found a pin there it is <laughs> I spotted a little mistake there where I've caught this but it was such a pain in the bum to do I'm just going to ignore it because this is going to go over it like that anyway so you're never going to see it <laughs> and th this project has very much become if you can't see it, it doesn't exist <laughs> anyway, so yeah we're ignoring the lining for now we're also ignoring this bit for now and we're just going to gather all of this down into the arms eye so i found the middle there i just need to find the middle of this bit There we go, and make sure that that is lined up properly with the shoulder seam. Right, and now we start gathering. <laughs> Right, I have now pinned the middle part, I suppose, of the sleeve into there as well. So this is currently three layers. So you've got the body of the tea gown. Inside you've got that massive puff sleeve. And then in this layer is the regular outer sleeve. And then all the way tucked in here is the lining. The plan is going to be sew this up. Then I can do any tidying up, getting rid of like gathering stitches and all that kind of stuff. Gathering threads, I mean. Then when I attach the lining, I can hide these raw edges by stitching down the body part of the lining and then coming over with the sleeve lining and that'll cover up that. I stitched my collar pieces together. I then added a layer of tarlatan and stitched along the outer edge of all three collar pieces and top stitched along the top. Next, I stitched a rolled hem on two of the front pieces, as well as sewing four more of the light pink linen mix fabric into tubes. And 
this is getting so big. <laughs> it's also incredibly heavy. It'll be warm. I'm I'm betting it'll be warm. But yeah, it's get it's getting very heavy now. <laughs> Luckily, there's only a few little things that I need to do. One of those things is putting the collar on. Before I can do that, I need to gather this little bit up like that so that it's around an inch. Then I need to get one of these little strips and I need to make like a weird loopy thing with it so it'll be something kind of like that and that needs to be attached into the collar area and then it just hangs down the other thing is oh I've just like I finished attaching this bit on this bit was basically sandwiched between the lining layer and this layer and then it was top stitched along the top I would have filmed that but this thing is getting incredibly difficult to wrangle under the sewing machine and no matter what angle I did it from you couldn't actually see me sewing in any of the footage so but yeah that's basically how I did it just I stitched these two bits together right sides facing each other then flipped the seam allowance down into this side towards the inside of the garment and then folded over the seam allowance, well folded under the seam allowance of the lining and then top stitched. It's nice seeing it coming to a point of completion because once I've got the little flappy bits the tie around the waist and the collar on the only other things I need to do are hem and some little buttons like two buttons there and then that is it, it is done so I'll get some footage of me doing those little bits um, and then I think it's going to be reveal time oh I forgot, the other thing that I was going to do is uh, because of the weight of it, I'm a little bit worried about like the shoulder stretching out and stuff like that. So I'm going to put some twill tape on the shoulder seams. I'm also going to put some twill tape on a little bit of the collar just to keep it stable and a little bit around the waist that's going to be gathered in as well. Um, just to give it a little bit of stability because like the linen viscose mixed material is quite floopy so I just want to give it a little bit of structure with this. I gathered up the pink fabric at the waistline and neckline. I then attached those floppy detail bits. I then attached the collar, hemmed it and added buttons.
I love how this has turned out. Seriously, I love pretty much everything about it. <laughs> it's so swishy. It's it's actually warm. I'm getting a little bit of a sweat on. <laughs> but yeah, it's really comfortable. I can move around in it. I've got really, really good range of motion. I love the sleeves. <laughs> They're so big. I just, yeah. The, there's a couple of little things. The collar didn't turn out quite how I wanted it. It's just not really got much shape to it. I was hoping it would flare out a little bit more, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. It's not the end of the world. A collar is a collar. <laughs> like It's still a stand-up collar at the end of the day, and that's fine. I'm thinking I might scrap the two buttons here all together like and move this button down to here because I don't like how this kind of gapes open so if I do that that will help, help close that and then just have the collar kind of open a bit more because I do also have a little bit of like a feeling like I'm restricted a little bit even though it's quite loose uh, the other thing is I took it in a little bit uh, just because I felt like I wanted it to look at least a little bit fitted around the waist, even though like it's got the big pleats down the back and stuff. In doing that, I think I misaligned things just a little bit. So you probably can't tell that much in the reveal footage, but the hemline has gone a little bit skew if <laughs> but again that's an easy fix it's just a case of undoing those little stitches that i put in and releasing it <laughs> and of course there was the issue with the sleeves the little poofy bits where i misaligned things so there was some rotation you can't tell you honestly can't tell you'd have to be looking really really close and if you're that close to me then <laughs> at the end of the day if something's not immediately apparent then it doesn't matter and it's me who's wearing it anyway <laughs> i am very much looking forward to swanning around in this when we go away the train is awesome um i can't really make the most of it in the flat because it's quite small but when we go away <laughs> It's swoosh time. Thank you very much to my coffee supporters. You should see your names here. The video and the pattern will be going up on my coffee at the same time that I upload this. So links in the description. There is also a link in the description to my Discord. So if you would like to join that, we have discussions on sewing, we post memes, we do an update of what kind of things I'm up to and also just random discussions like how Finland's entry to Eurovision is actually a cybergoth band. <laughs> I've just dumped a load of like old school cybergoth like videos in like the video section. So if you're interested, then links to everything is going to be in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I have enjoyed making this outfit and I cannot wait to wear it properly. YouTube is saying that you might like this video right here next and I will see you next time. Bye!